Hello everybody, my name is Andrew Bracken and I am a horologist or a clock repair expert or just somebody who messes around with clocks. It's a hobby of mine, uh, something I've been doing for quite a long time. Um, you'll have to excuse the background noise. <laughs> Part of my collection has decided to uh, start chiming. So uh, anyway, um, as a matter of fact, we're about to hear this one in just a minute. Uh, but uh, anyway, this is the clock we're going to be focusing on today. It is a Seth Thomas Cottage Clock from January of 1889. Um, it is an eight-day time and strike um, on the hour. Uh, the, the one behind you going off is very loud. <laughs> what a good start to this video. But anyway, moving on. perfect timing. Anyway, um, what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be focusing on this one right here. Um, as I was saying, this is a Seth Thomas uh, cottage clock. It's from 1889, January. Um, and we know this because on the back of the clock, which I will put a picture up here in a moment, um, it has the date code of 9881A. The A signifies the month, and the 9881 is just the year flipped. So instead of saying 1889, they would put it 9881. So anyway, moving on. Uh, we're going to be focusing on this one today. Um, it is a very nice piece. Um, it is not perfect by any means. Um, so far, it does keep time but there are some, some small issues that need to be addressed first. Um, I have already inspected it. I have not done any work to it yet, um, but I have already taken the dial face off, inspected the movement. Um, I have not taken the movement out. I have not t taken anything off except for the dial face, the hands, just to inspect it. So anyway, we're gonna go ahead and remove this dial face. So now we have, um, we have our clock here four screws. Um, they're just a small slotted screw, but before we even try to mess with those screws, we first have to take the hands off. Now there's a couple ways to do this. There's safe ways and not safe ways. I just like to take a pair of just regular old tweezer, or, uh, <laughs> tweezers, um, needle nose pliers, and I just, on the, sh on the, um, the slender, the more slender end, I just kind of hold it here and just give it a little push and I just take it out and then I have a little cup over here that I put, sink, put things in here and then this little brass washer and thing here two pieces there just kind of put those aside and then this one here this is where I wish I had my fingernails the hour hand just kind of pulls off like that. Okay, pretty simple. And we're going to go ahead and stop this. I'm just going to take the pendulum off. Put that way out of the way because we're not going to need that until a while from now. So anyway, so we're just going to go ahead and jump right in here with a slotted screwdriver, a little one. If I remember right, this one here, the slot was a little not very nice. And then when removing the last screw, you kind of want to keep a little hand on the clock here or on the dial to keep it from falling and potentially messing up the here you know what I can just put my thumb here these screws are in at a bit of an angle okay. and we'll just work that out and voila we have our clock movement which, to the, you know, first impressions are everything here, but um, 
it's fairly clean um, for the most part. Um, it looks like it hasn't really had any service before, just on initial observations here. Um, but there again, appearances aren't everything. Um, but what I need to do here, and I will adjust the camera to show you here. Okay. This is what I need to focus on right here. This, this um, pivot is the the pivot hole is very worn you can see how far over I can move it it is nowhere near the center of the oil sink which tells me that it's badly in need of service um, and if I can move that with the spring under tension that's uh, usually an indicator that it needs to be um, needs to be repaired and a new bushing installed now, before I go any further, let's take a look at some of the, the other tools that you will need to complete this. I would like to make this a how-to video. And so by, you know, making this into a video that, you know, just about anybody can, can watch and understand what's going on, it's, um, it's really not hard. This is kind of an intro to clock repair. And I'm not saying that I'm an expert by any means. I try to I try to explain things as best I can. Um, I know I'm not the greatest public speaker, but I will do the best that I can and try to be as informative as I can to try to help you out. 